So, Michael, let's we're just going to start right now. Would you do me a favor? Introduce yourself. I already got the backstory, which is awesome. But for anybody watching, we'd love to hear your name and any information you have from a professional perspective on what it is that you do. Yeah, well, Tony, thanks again. I know you're busy and I'm busy as well. But yeah, I'm essentially an independent Medicare broker. Uh, I got in, I got into Medicare from tennis actually, and it was a huge switch for me from being on court to the to uh, you know to doing this insurance thing. And so, uh, yeah, my mom was like going through a lot of stuff. I had a lot of questions. You know, she had you know kidney failure, uh, bile duct cancer, Crohn's disease. So it was just like during a time I had a lot of questions and everything. And, you know, I was reading all these information from the physicians I, and I didn't know what it meant, even though, you know, I couldn't get into the healthcare thing, but I maybe could do start this. But yeah, um, so I guess my position right now, since I've been doing it for five years, is like the transparency with the, just the information in general is not simplified. Seems to be uh, whether it's like a, a marketing ploy or just a game. Uh, and so a lot of times people um, don't can't discern their own situation because they don't see the path day in and day out. So I'm right. just trying to um, get perspective on, on the, like the three parts, like, you know, there is an insurance part, but the provider part is so critical and knowing that they are going to be able to be covered by your plan that you have, you know? And now, so, were you a tennis pro? Were you coaching? What were you doing? <laughs> I was coaching a lot of kids in the Charleston surrounding area. I mean, I'm talking thousands of some of kids, summer camps. Wow. All the different areas are down here in Charleston, Kiowa, Mount Pleasant, West Ashley, downtown Charleston, James Island. Uh, yeah, I, 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 it ran its course and uh, I still like to be involved in the community, but not be uh, stuck on the right. tennis court. So I actually pay, play a lot of pickleball and volunteer for uh, pickleball programs uh, through a friend of mine's um, community outreach. So I still uh, like to be able to coach uh, kids and stuff and, and instruct, but I don't want to do it for a living. So sure. I, I'm in the insurance. So, but yeah, as to, to for your audience, though, it's obviously a busy time of year when you are being, you know, bombarded, solicited to, I mean, everybody and their mama is talking about their own benefits. They're seeing all these celebrities, all this, all this news as well. And a lot of it does not pertain to your situation. Like everybody's Medicare path is not the same. You know, right. I literally just spoke to someone who has VA benefits you know, she wants to keep her drug coverage for VA, uh, but she had all this back end spending on her on her plan that she had and she wasn't expecting that. You know, people don't like uh, especially beneficiaries don't like uh, surprises financially. And, you know, Kaiser Family Foundation, literally, I love your dog in the background. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I literally literally Kaiser Family Foundation ha had a quiz and I took the quiz and it said that half of Medicare uh, beneficiaries live on $26,000 or less each year. And I was like, is this quiz correct? That's, that sounds like preposterous. And I was right. like 50%. And so there's a lot of um, availability for options out there. If you're on a certain path, uh -huh. if you're on original Medicare, that is the program that has been with uh, uh, beneficiaries since 19. 65. So it's just like that doesn't change, but the other ones do. So I, I like to clarify and analyze where people are. Well, and that's what's so great about having you being willing to do this interview, because I want to kind of give you a little bit of context about two of the conversations that come up all the time okay. in our world. So sure. I'm a licensed physical therapist, a private practice owner, but I also coach and teach physical therapists how to work with Medicare contract and build their private practice. Yeah. And so one of the things that, you know, we run into as clinicians is the patients, the beneficiary don't totally understand the difference between Medicare part B, Medicare part C. I just had a situation really? in the clinic yesterday where a patient was referred to us 
following an elbow fracture. They gave me a Medicare card, a red, white, and blue Medicare card, and then an Aetna Medicare Advantage card yep. saying Can't that they have Medicare. Well, clearly they didn't understand. They thought Aetna was the secondary. And yep. so one of the conversations I'd love for you to shed some light on is we always advise individuals who are of Medicare age to connect with a professional like you yeah. don't make these decisions on your own because the the big picture is so important and so where a plan might look attractive in one light it might be completely the wrong plan for you depending on your personal needs your family needs your financial needs yeah. and so i would love for you to kind of shed some light on some of the pros and cons of medicare versus medicare advantage and something you said in one of your videos and i'm going to link to your channel down below in the description is you talked about at least the impression i got was looking at switching policies not sticking with one policy because one policy that works for you today might not be the policy that works for you in three years so wow. any information you would be willing to share from your side as the expert on the insurance plans would be amazing. Yeah, no, I appreciate the opportunity to just speak about what I do because uh, there's a stigma, right? There's always a stigma with insurance. Yeah, there's always a stigma with uh, people that uh, try to tell you about different plans. And so I get it. The great thing about it is that if you find somebody online and it doesn't have to be me, that is actually uh, speaking a lot of truth and they have a lot of like credibility with their, um, you know, Google reviews and stuff and, 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 and just have a, a kind of a following, which I have a new channel, so I don't have a very big following sure. for Medicare, but uh, I just can tell you that um, I think it's right around, even with all the commercials and everything, I think it's right around yes, 97, 98% of beneficiaries do not shop their Medicare plans and coverages. And it literally states on the National uh, Association of Insurance Commissioners on individual uh, uh, insurance policies that um, uh, duration of coverage adversely affects your premiums, your cost sharing, because we all know that uh, healthcare increases over time. So uh, if you don't have an advocate for you, if you don't have an advisor, that somebody that specializes in like actually um, kind of reducing your costs and also uh, looking and analyzing at the cost sharing, like you're basically out there alone and you're like, oh, I'm going to go with the brand. I'm going to go with the actual like person uh, that's, uh, you know, that I know and trust. But really, there has to be a lot of due diligence. I mean, Medicare changes every single year. I mean, uh, this reconciliation bill is going to help lower the drug costs for beneficiaries. You know how many beneficiaries have thousands and thousands of dollars of, out of, uh, of outpatient drug coverage that they have to uh, account for each and every year? I mean, it literally eats at their savings. So, you know, I'm very passionate about it because obviously I just told you about my mother's situation sure. where she had bile duct cancer, she had... Uh, kidney failure, she had Crohn's disease, she had ileostomy bag. So it hits home uh, uh, a lot for the folks that actually really know somebody in their life where they have uh, to carry that burden. I mean, it, my dad was like, he went from, okay, I'm the husband and I get to, you know, do woodworking stuff to like, I'm the homemaker. I got to take her every two to three days for dialysis at 4.30 a.m., I got to pick up her medications. I mean, he was kind of grumpy at the time to look back at it because he really was burdened by that. And he was very much a, a rock for my mom. So, right. you know, it's a, it matters so much that this benefit is uh, specific to you and your path because it's not like life insurance. You get to use it. You get to have the relationships with your providers, like your PTs, OTs, doctors and everything, because that that relationship matters when you actually know the uh, the providers in your area or the ones that you uh, want to go to. 
Yeah. Now, let me ask you, because I know a lot of people in the audience might not be familiar with two of the things that you said. So one, you said cost sharing. And for those of you who don't know, cost sharing would be referring to the deductible, the co-insurance, the premium right. or deductible co-insurance and co-pays, the things that yeah. the beneficiary is paying for out of pocket. But you also talked about the duration of the policy adversely, adversely affecting um, mm -hmm. the plan and coverage. Tell me about that. What does that mean? What's that look like? Okay. So um, it's, it's obviously going to get into the weeds for a lot of people when I discuss this, but uh, as simple as I can make it is that uh, over time, we all know that healthcare insurance increases, right? It does right. not matter whether you have, uh, um, you know, under 65 major medical plan or Medicare coverages. I mean, Medicare is going up. The cost of uh, Medicare is going up. So insurance goes up. So what that means for you is that each and every year, it may take, you know, five, 10 minutes with an advisor that you trust that actually gets all the updates that actually has an upline and a support system and all the news and stuff that comes into them. And then they can tell you, hey, this is uh, this is not good for you to be paying on this health plan that was, you know, ten zero dollars or ten dollars a month. I'm talking about Medicare Advantage, sure. typically low premium or zero premium. And then all of a sudden it goes up to seventy dollars and you didn't shop your plan and you didn't have some a time and an annual review. And then you're you're paying, you know, seventy dollars extra a month when you could be on a plan that's zero premium. Or if you're on, um, you know, original Medicare as their primary health insurance with a secondary Medigap plan, those Medigap plans increase over time with, you know, either attained age, a community rated or issue age rated. And, you know, they all go up. That's what I'm saying. So it's right. very important to have uh, someone that is um, vested in not only what they're doing, but specific to Medicare. I mean, a lot of uh, advisor, uh, financial advisors do a great job of, you know, helping you with your um, financial um, services. But Medicare is an entirely different beast that I was not prepared for when I first got into the thing. I was like, okay, I'll just have a lot of clients. I'll just talk to a lot of people. No, you really have to know uh, the ins and outs and uh, speak with professionals like you because I wanted, I, I reached out to you first. Right. And, and really wanted to know how do the providers feel about, um, you know, working with the, the, the Medicare billing and CMS and, you know, and I think I learned from you 